community here. We're in the garage today going live real quick and of course the replay will be added so many of you might be watching on the replay here but just for a little bit of context what we're doing here on this uh, what kind of car is a Jeep Grand Cherokee is a simple two-stage correction actually so Basically, we're gonna be coating this vehicle. Actually, we're gonna put a ceramic coating on it in the next uh, two days, I believe, well, three days. Um, and we've gone ahead and finished the first step of this two-stage paint correction. And what we have now is, basically, we attacked this paint relatively aggressively, all right? So from, um, the majority of the paint was, we used a microfiber cutting disc um, from Lake Country and we used a uh, relatively aggressive compound when it's uh, combined with that sort of pad specifically. Um, and in different parts of the car, I also picked up the rotary to help me fit into different areas. So my point in saying that is the what's been done on this vehicle so far is relatively aggressive. Okay. One of the common problems that happens when you're doing a two-stage correction, especially when, you're, when you've not done a lot of paint correction, Anthony, what's up, man? Um, what happens is you get this tiny, tiny, tiny little hazing effect left over, and I'm looking for my light here. Um, okay, there it is. You get this tiny, tiny hazing effect left over from essentially a lot of different things, but one of the main reasons it happens is because you're actually attacking the paint at a relatively aggressive level. So what are we doing? We're removing a relatively large amount of clear coat. Now again, we're not really taking out a lot of clear coat. What's up, Daniel, Tim, good to see you guys. Uh, but we are taking out a minimal amount of clear coat and when we're compounding the paint with a rotary or a DA with that microfiber cutting disc that, I, like I explained, with that compound, what, we, what happens is we remove a little bit more clear coat than if we were just doing something like paint enhancement and that removed clear coat actually gets installed into the pad that I'm using. Well, why is that a problem? Well, because as that residue gets installed into the face of that pad and even coats some of those microfibers, my DA is spinning around and around and around and I'm finishing it with this black finishing pad but I have the microfiber pad on here and it's spinning and those microfibers are cutting into the paint and they have some of that clear coat residue on them. So we have something called DA haze, which is a common phenomenon that I wanna to try to show you guys now. Now this is gonna be relatively difficult, okay? Uh, because there's not a lot of it, but let's go ahead and switch the camera around. Okay, so let me sit back here. All right, so we're just gonna deal with this, um, this back area here, all righty? So I'm gonna take my Rupes pen light here, and I wanna show you guys if you look at the center bulb, so when we're dealing with black paint, by the way, just so you know, when we're dealing with black paint, we're correcting black paint, oftentimes we kind of can hold the, the light at a bit of a 45 degree angle and you can see the DA haze highlighted a little bit better. When you're dealing with white paint, I like to cut straight through the paint so you kind of hold it perpendicular to the paint and it'll uh, expose a little bit more there. We also have my scan grip multi-match light back here and this of course lights up a lot of the, a lot of the paint as well. Actually down here there's a lot of dust um, from me not yet cleaning the paint. So I'm gonna try to show you guys the difference here. Okay, so let's look at this. Number one, as I hold my pen light straight forward, it's a little bit more difficult to see. As I tilt it at that 45 degree angle, I want you guys to look at the top of the light. The bulb is sitting at the top. And as that bulb moves downward, you see some of that refracted light in a hazy sort of ray. So that's the best way I know how to describe it. If you're on the live stream right now and you can see what I'm talking about, put in the chat, I can see it. Put I can see it in the chat. If you can see what I'm talking about, this is what DA haze looks like. As I move my light, you can see that hazy appearance there. It's coming down from the top of the bulb, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna fix that problem. So before we do anything else, so once again, the paint looks fantastic. There's no swirls on the paint. There's really no even surface level imperfections in this area. There's, there's a sum. I would have to look for them. But all the swirls are gone, and what we have is what I call paint correction-induced mistakes, which it's actually not a mistake, but let's say paint correction-induced imperfection, which is that DA haze, because we were so aggressive, we really bit into this paint in that stage one, and now we're moving on to that stage two. So here's what we're going to do. 
Sorry for the close-up of my face there. Here's what we want to do, okay? I'm gonna take my uh, Lake Country black finishing foam pad here. And here's what I want to do is, without going into too much detail about everything I'm using, I'm just going to go around like this. Okay, I'm being pretty uh, quick with it here. I'm just gonna use a very minimal amount of polish here and we're gonna basically take this full first left hand side of this back, uh, this back uh, panel here. And I wanna move this light so I can see things well. Okay, so before we do anything, I just wanna show you guys that this can actually be removed relatively easily, okay? You tilt the camera there. And it's something that is so common with people who are beginning and they get so frustrated with it. I just wanna show you guys a couple quick strategies. No, I'm not taping anything off right here because I'm being fast and I've already got dust in these places. We're gonna clean this afterwards. But once again, this is the second stage of the uh, two-stage polish here, okay? So I'm just gonna stamp that out a little bit, put my uh, DA on one, gonna spread it around really quickly. Okay, now I'm gonna kick up my speed to about three. I'm gonna do very minimal downward pressure and I'm gonna move at not the slowest pace in the world and I'll give a little bit more detail on that in just a second here, okay? I want you guys to see what I'm doing. I'm not putting any downward pressure. I'm just letting the pressure of the uh, polisher itself rest against this paint uh, panel vertically. And I'm holding that pressure on it because obviously gravity is pushing down on me. So I have to push into the paint a little bit. All right. And I want you to notice how straightforward and simple these motions, technically speaking, that I'm using are here, okay? I'm not being excessive going over the paint too many times or anything like that. because we're live and I just wanna make sure I get it taken care of here on the first time so I don't waste anybody's time. But let me go ahead and uh, wipe this off. I'm gonna turn this light off as well. Whoa. So I can see just a little bit better here. And basically what I wanna show you guys is, yeah, perfect. All right, hold on, let me wipe this off. We're gonna kinda of look at this side by side. This'll be a good kind of comparison here. So let me get a couple angles. Yes, 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 okay. I'm just trying to get all the polish off here because I've got a bunch of polish on this towel. So I'm just trying to get it all off the paint here. And I really should have just switched towels before I started this, but that's okay. All right, let me switch this around. Okay, so I want you guys to notice a couple things here. As I pierce through the paint here with my light, do you see how that DA haze is gone? All right, let me show you here. Once again, I can show you actually, sorry, on this side. This is dust right here, so ignore that. It's a bunch of polishing dust. I want you guys to see. See if I can get another angle here. Uh, see, the problem is there's not a lot of DA haze in the first place uh, because, well, in some ways, the better you are, the more paint correction you do, the better you become. So I'm actually, <laughs> darn it, I'm trying to find some haze here. Uh, there, okay, okay, wait. There's some haze. So if you look 
around the bulb of the light there, maybe on this panel, you can see that tiny bit of light being kind of distorted. Okay, hold on, let me get it. All right, there you go, there you go. Now I wanna come to this area that we just finished with the second stage of correction. Do you see no matter where I move the light, there's no haze? Now there's a little up here because I've gotta uh, get the polish off there. Um, but this area that we just corrected here, do you see how no matter where I move it, that DA haze has been totally taken care of. And now we just have this beautiful, glossy, awesome black finish. Okay, let's talk about that. One of the most common reasons why you get DA haze or just haze in general, this is very common with a rotary and there's not always times that you can help it. There's also not always times you can help it with a DA because the fact of it is, when you are biting into paint aggressively, like I always say, there are, and uh, one of the viewers here just said he couldn't see it. So that's actually part of the problem here is hazing from a DA, from a dual action polisher is so subtle. It's so subtle and it's so hard to pick up on if you uh, haven't been in the, doing a lot of paint correction in the paint correction world. There are certain imperfections like that that are just, you might look at the paint and say, hey, this thing looks awesome, uh, but it's actually got this hazing appearance. And the reason why that haze is an issue is not because, um, not because it's going to hurt the long-term protection of the clear coat itself. Like it's not that the clear coat's gonna degrade any faster because of that imperfection. It's, it's solely a visual appeal problem. And when you are gonna ceramic coat something like this, you wanna make sure that the way the light bounces off the paint, it happens in that really smooth way rather than that you know, light hitting the paint and it gets all, you know, distorted and then it reflects. That's actually why it, we perceive it that, like with the human eyes, it, it, you perceive it as like an ugly finish when it's got a bunch of swirls, that's the reason. DA haze is so subtle, you do in some ways have to be trained to actually see it. But what I was saying before I got off that little rant was, there are variables inside of your control and variables outside of your control when you're doing something like this. So oftentimes in the, in the paint correction world, I hear guys who I'm pretty sure they just don't have detailing businesses and they're just on Instagram like spouting off. That's probably the truth. But people say, oh man, you've got that haze, you've got that, those rotary swirls, you've got uh, buffer tracks or holograms. You don't know what you're doing. Well, the problem with that is in a situation like this, here are some things that are in my control. Number one, the polish I'm using, the pad I'm using, the specific technique I'm using in terms of arm speed, polisher speed, downward pressure, etc., etc. Here are some things I'm not in control of. The amount of residue coming off the paint uh, in terms of clear coat being cut away. Yes, I'm in, I'm in control of it at a certain level because I'm the one applying the technique that's actually making the clear coat get cut at a microscopic level, but my point is, the rate at which that's happening is largely you know, something I have to figure out as I'm actually doing the correction. How much of that residue is being installed into my pad and where it's being installed exactly, not totally in my control. Whether or not this paint is really hard or really soft or somewhere in between kind of average, not in my control. The precondition of the car before I ever saw it, how long it's kept outside, is it garage kept, who owned it, has it ever been repainted, all of these things are completely outside of my control. So, the reason I say that is because you have certain times in the paint correction world where things get worse before they get better. And that's even a bit of an oversimplification because things aren't getting necessarily worse as I'm doing this stage one correction. Things are getting much better, but as you're pulling out the swirls, sometimes it's an opportunity cost, it's a trade-off. You say, if I wanna pull out the surface swirls here and the surface imperfections and get rid of all the oxidation to where this thing looks 99% perfect, I'm gonna actually have to attack this at an aggressive level where I might get some DA haze in certain areas left over because certain areas are more scratched than others, more imperfected. So down at these lower rocker panels, I'm putting a lot of downward pressure, a lot of all that, you know, uh, there's change that happens in different areas of the paint is my point. And I might have to be more aggressive in the rocker panels. I might have to be less aggressive up here. I might have to be more aggressive in the hood because that's actually sitting like this. And that's where rain falls and bug guts fall and bird droppings and all that stuff. So there's a lot of imperfections there. And I have to really go at it with a lot of aggression. And I get some DA haze or some holograms left over. I might have to take care of that in the second stage of the paint correction process. That's just the name of the game. 
that's how this works. So are there ways where you can eliminate it and reduce it in certain situations? Absolutely. And of course, the better you become and the more experienced and educated you get in the pain correction world, you'll be able to do that at a higher level. But the point is, no matter how much you are educated in this world, there are always those variables that are outside of your control. So what I wanted to show you guys was just the fact that, and I'll show you again here. I just wanted to show you guys the fact that we could actually have DA Hayes in this area here and we could take care of it like literally in live, on live uh, YouTube <laughs> video here, just to show you guys that if you're having that problem and the hazing looks something like, something like, Ah, see, there's not a lot of hazing there. Hold on, I'll find some. We got a lot of dust there. Uh, hold on. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right, we got some hazing there. See that? If you look out from the left and the right side of the bulb, you got a little bit of hazing. And what I wanted to show you guys was just that we could take care of it just like that, where you can get flawless paint in a minute and a half, two minutes with the right strategy, the right products, the right combination. And... It's a problem that just tends to really stump people because in a lot of ways, if you haven't dealt with it a lot, as you try to deal with it, people, it, they, don't, they don't actually get it fixed. So they just keep polishing and polishing and polishing. And my first and maybe biggest point with this video here is, because I'm kind of processing even as I'm shooting it for you guys, if you are running into an, a lot of DA haze and when you try to fix it, whatever you're doing isn't working, the number one thing I want you guys to do is just switch your pad. And I don't mean switch to a different pad, I mean switch to a clean pad. Or rip the pad off the polisher that you're using and clean it, hose, or, uh, blast it out with your air compressor, and I mean like actually clean it, like rinse it, like rinse all the residue, all the polish out of it, then go back and try to fix that DA haze. Start with a clean pad, okay? Yes, this is a root base swirl finder light. Guys, uh, later today when I get back to my office here and I'm not in my garage, I will post a link to the products that I used in this video below in the YouTube description box. And by the way, guys, um, if you are interested in starting your auto detailing business and you're looking for just the fundamental tools and products that you need, I'll post my free guide below this video in the description box where you guys can grab that guide. It's, my, it's the top products I suggest for anybody starting in the detailing business, not necessarily paint correction, but anybody just starting who wants to do it on a budget that actually makes sense. Uh, and you just want a real world advice from somebody who's actually doing it, who knows what it's like to not want to spend a thousand dollars or two thousand or five thousand dollars to just start your business especially if you're a young guy uh, and you don't have that kind of money so anyway guys thank you so much for watching please subscribe to the youtube channel if you find this information helpful and you'd like more of it leave a comment after this is posted and let me know if you like the video so that i can post more and do a little bit more live stuff if you like the live stuff and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and finish this uh second stage of this paint correction guys thank you so much for tuning in as always from luke here at wilson auto detailing Keep working hard, and I will see you guys in the next video.